Okay, folks, this is NC4XL, North Carolina for Extreme Lovers. And I'm not. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Dom. For those of you that have been on Facebook, and you see the cup, they go together. Generally, two cups means I'm on the road to go out to activate a park. And for those of you wondering, what is this video about today? It's for all of our new hunters that are a little confused on the awards and why do I keep working the same person and all these different parks and things like that. I'm going to try to explain a little bit. It might be a half hour video. I'll give you a heads up. I don't know how to put the puzzle pieces together. What I have is what you can get for any of you that wish a email to you of what I'm going to talk about, I'll be glad to email it. Go through my QRZ, you can get it there. And in the title I'll put awards info simple awards simple now let's see if we can get you organized uh, from your residence right now if you're on Facebook and you have the uh, POTA page up you'll see a lot of comments and different photos of different awards and things like that well if you register on Facebook for parks on the air It's going to give you a lot of information, and I really want to stress this. Take some time and read the frequently asked questions before you ask a question that gets asked so many times over and over, when really all it requires us is just to take some time. The awards section, now this is what we're going to talk about. Once you're registered and you go to uh, the left-hand side, there's uh, three bars that goes across the top. You click on it. Go all the way down to the bottom where it says Parks on the Air. When you click on that, another open green screen comes up, and you'll see a section that says Awards. Click on that. Now, what I have paper-wise is a lot of that information that I printed out for a reason so that I can talk about it. But it's also nice for you to try to put two and two together in the puzzle so it fits and makes sense. So let's see if I can start this out. You as a brand new hunter or brand new activator, either one, every contact you make is working towards another accomplishment, another certificate, another achievement. It's not a contest to get these. It's based on you. When you first get started, you have standard awards that come pretty fast, and let's talk about them. Just for hunting and activating, you work 10 different parks. You get the bronze award. You work 20 different parks. You achieve the silver award. You work 30 different parks. You get the gold award. You work 40 different parks, you get the Platinum Award. You work 50 different parks, you get the Diamond Award. Uh, and the 75 different parks get you the Sapphire. Now, that's as a hunter or an activator. There is an award for work in what we call DX 
entities. That means France, Germany, uh, England, uh, Dominican Republic. There's two other entities which don't really fit, but that's where they're at. It's called Alaska and Hawaii. Those are classified as DX entities. And another one that fits in that ballpark is called United States. So when you click on the left hand side and you go, you see the drop down menu, it says awards and stats and stuff. If you click on stats, and then the window will open up and say hunted, and you will see a list of all the DX entities we're going to call them because that's what they call them. But it breaks it down. Uh, Puerto Rico, England, France, Germany, Poland. Wherever parks are activated from, okay, as a hunter and you work a park over there, as a Hunter, you work a park over there, that's another entity. Okay. There's 340 DX entities available at present, and that's subject to change as more countries come in line with what we do in parks on the air. And there's achievements, and we'll talk about how you get your achievement certificate and so forth here in a minute. But there's Every time you move up in steps of five, well, you got United States, you got Alaska, you got Hawaii, you got Puerto Rico. There's four right now, and Gene's uh, he's over in France. Uh, that's five. Puerto Rico, I already said. Uh, England, uh, uh, you know, you work parks over there. It's relatively easy to get the first ten as a hunter because of all the different parks overseas across the water that are happening. So watch that. Learn that left side of the app, I'll call it, and check daily. Then there's going to be the advanced awards. I know you can't really see a lot here, okay? But the advanced awards breaks it down for every hundred parks you work as a hunter every hundred parks you work now as an activator if you're out there working a park to parks <laughs> guess what it counts for you too so don't think you're left out but they give each a certificate or achievement or an award a name I'm not going to go through the list of names, but I've printed it out. If you're looking at the app that, as I said, and you clicked on the awards, and it goes to the advanced section, advanced awards, it'll break down the awards. Georgia Astor Awards for 800 different reference areas. The Hel uh, Helconia Augusta Award for 2,500 awards. I mean, uh, differences, okay? There's a lot. And I guess the easiest way for your new hunters and activators is, is go to the profile of any activator you see out there or any hunter you hear out there. And when you click on their profile, you're going to see a lot of images, a lot of images of the different achievements that they have made. Okay, we're going to take a break here just a second and put this in a little bit more perspective. When you achieve an achievement on the awards set tab, they will list your awards. You can sort them in alphabetical order. You can sort them by date, and let's talk about date, or you can sort them by park number, there's many different ways to play with that that's comfortable for you. Remember this. 
those awards are in a PDF file. So if you're on your laptop, or I do it on my phone, I download it on my phone, I screenshot it, I take an image picture of it, and I post it and I brag on it because I worked hard to get it. The same thing for you at home. You can download it, and you can print it and put it in your uh, My Progress book or uh, fill up your wall with it. And If you go pull up my uh, profile and you look at all the different ones, there's 200 plus there. I, don't, I lost count, to be honest with you. But it's fun. But let's talk about the awards just a moment. The way the structure is set up, the first date that you get an initial award you can accumulate additional steps, but the date never changes. So you really got to pay attention to that award section. I wish it was more user-friendly, but it's not. It's what it is. And I'll explain that when we get to a couple other sections, uh, names of awards, okay? Very simple. Download it, right-click it, I call it. Uh, download it, save it. Uh, you can print them out. It changes sometimes daily, depending, especially when you're brand new and you're working with a lot of people. It don't take long for you to achieve a lot of awards. Now, Rover, you'll hear a lot of different people talk about Rover awards. What is it? Well, you work five parks in a UTC date. You get a Rover award. It's called a Warthog. If you do, and I did this one, you do 10 parks in one single UTC day, that's a rhino. I got me a rhino. I bypassed the warthog. I, I still can go back out, do another five row, five park row, and get the warthog certificate if I wanted it. But it goes all the way up to cheetah, which is 15, then to ostrich, which is 20, and then to the leopard, which is 25, and then to lion, that's 30 parks in a single day. I'm not going to, I'll never get there, but their challenges are there for you, okay? Early shift and late shift is based off of UTC time where you're at. Simple as that, where you're at. UTC time is based on where you're at. You have an early shift, you have a late shift. I still get confused. All I know is I just go out and have fun and work it, okay? So, you got a worked all states achievement. It's got 51 in it, and the reason is DC is a wild card. Let's say you didn't get Montana and Rhode Island, but you got Alaska and Hawaii. But you need Rhode Island. You haven't worked it yet, but you worked D.C. D.C. will fill in the slot for Rhode Island and give you a worked all states because D.C. is a wild card. Some of us, we are stubborn and we want to do the worked all states all 51, because we don't want to utilize the wild card. Well, it's automatically done, so you'll receive a worked all states that way. It's just up to you to persevere for the 50th state also. Worked all provinces. There's 13 provinces in Canada. The territories are not included in that achievement. There's 13 provinces, and this is not as easy as you think it is. But it took me to over two years to get there. So, another challenge. Now, repeat offender is a term, is a term that as a hunter, you work me as a mobile, uh, correction, me as an activator, 20 times in that park, 
that's a repeat offender for that award. As an activator, I activated that park 20 times. I get into a repeat offender award. There's different levels for every step of 20. You have the Oasis Award, you have the Fox Den Award at 40, you have the Bear Cave Award at 60, you have the Fishing Hole Award at 80, you have the Eagle's Nest at 100. This entire process can go on forever at present. Okay? Those are accomplishments and achievements you have no earthly idea because you're brand new. And it's really hard to explain it where it makes sense until you start going through the process and you start looking. Let me see if I can get into another section here. Eagles nest award which is where my focus is now because i've achieved that level with the number of activations and parks and stuff and the first five parks uh, with a hundred contacts at that same park works towards your Eagles Award. It's called a park supporter. And when you have 10 parks at 100 contacts per park, you as an activator become a roamer, and as a hunter, you become the stalker. When you achieve 15 parks, at a hundred contacts at that park, as an activator, you're a traveler, and as a hunter, you get the prowler. So, I have the prowler, I have the stalker, and I have the park supporter, and there's more to come, because those are long-range goals that when I started this, <laughs> I never knew what I was getting into, okay? So, more challenges. Again, I'll send this to you. You can print it out if you like, write on it. It's there on the uh, Facebook page. It's there in the award section, as I said, but we'll talk a little bit more. Operator to operator, I'm out there working and you work me in uh, 50 parks and you're at home. You work me 50 times in 50 parks. Or you work me 50 times in that one park. There's two different types of awards. Operator to operator. Park to parks is when I'm out there and you see me focus a lot on the park to parks because it's, it's important to me, not to you, but to me. I want all the park to parks that I can achieve out there and how I do it is go hunt them when I'm out activating to go look for them, to help them get their 10th uh, contact so that they don't have to stress out. Most of you hunters don't have any idea what it's like to go out there and wonder where is number 9 and number 7 or number 3 or number 8 or number 10 are because you don't hear anything. So the park to parks are vitally important and we as activators can help each other but there's an award for park to parks in steps of 25. Okay. There's some other unique awards working N1CC, working 10 contacts on 10 different bands in 10 different parks. There's the Kilo Award for 
the activator only, not the hunter. The kilo is for the activator, not the hunter. Where I have had 1,000 contacts in that park. And again, if you look at my totals, the kilos, I have, I got 23 kilos in uh, 83.13. But I'm credited with one kilo because there's no, at present, steps or anything like that for each additional kilo. Crazy people like me, we're just going to go and have fun. That's for the activator to get the kilo. The hunter does not get the kilo. And let's speak a little bit real plain here. The hunter sends no logs in. If that activator fails to send a log in, or fat fingers a call, or you think that you made the contact, they didn't hear you because it was very close to marginal, almost non-existent, whatever. You're not in the log. Don't get upset. The park will come out again. And uh, what we're supposed to do when we're out there is there's no relaying uh, contacts or relaying call signs or relaying park numbers. It's what we, that's you and me, when I'm working you, I hear you tell me your call sign. Or if you're an activator, I hear you tell me your park number. Or I hear you tell me your call sign. I can manage sometimes to figure out what letter I might be missing. That is something I can do. Now, I keep a log on uh, paper. A lot of folks use in devices. Uh, you don't need a device to, to go out and activate parks, okay? But... If you're new and you're wondering why this addiction is crazy, every day folks are out going into different parks and in, admiring the waterfalls and the, and the animals that are out there and the fellowship with other people. And for going out to do it, they're practicing their emergency communications, they're setting up with different antennas, different radios, different power levels. The achievement that an activator gets comes from the hunters chasing us. The achievements that the hunters get is from the activators going there. We all work together, neither one is better than the other. And both parts need both parts. Go to the awards page, play around, look at it, download where you see Bear's Den or Eagle's Nest, and there's a PDF uh, file there for 8313, there's one for 4852, there's one for 2752. Those are all different in your searching of your awards if you sort it up at the very top and you hit the tab button to the right or left and you want to sort it by park numbers it'll put every park number that you have already worked that's in your award section so you can see what awards you got for that park many activators will pick up one uh, james k uh, e8 uh, papa zulu november works many parks in West Virginia, and he works many of them as eagles, 100 contacts. And it's endless what we as activators can accomplish when we go out. But the other side of it is you as hunters can earn eagles too for working us in those same parks a number of times. NC4XL, North Carolina for Extreme Lovers. If you've listened this far and uh, there's another subject you want me to run my mouth about, I am not an expert. I've been licensed a couple years since 78. A lot of things have changed in our field, but amateur radio is fun. It should be fun. Uh, it doesn't have to evolve around a lot of fancy equipment in order to make a contact. 
a wire in the sky is what I use. That's my choice. I can use a vertical on the ground. I can use the new thing now. Everybody's using a screen. Whatever you use, whatever you experiment with, is your hobby and enjoy it. And uh, take it to the next level. Do your next step, whatever it is. If you're a hunter and you want to be an activator, suggestion number one, if there's an activator around you that would take you out, let you sit there behind the mic, then go for it. If you're a technician and you go out with another activator, you on, only can operate under their call sign, period, regardless of the frequency they're on, because if it's not in your class as a technician, you cannot utilize your license call. You must use theirs. If you're in the portion of the band where you are authorized as a technician to have audio characteristics projected out of your mouth, knock yourself out. But the next step is to move up. So that question comes up quite frequently. Can I take somebody else out? If they use your call sign and you're in the general portion of the band or the advanced portion of the band or the extra portion of the band, they got to use your call sign, period. If they are a general or whatever for that part of the band, they can use their call sign. If they are a technician, no. No, the technician has to be able to operate in the portion of the band that he he or she's authorized in, and the class of license that they have dictates you can operate there. Uh, they can only go and watch you and observe how you do things. And never hesitate to ask me if you want to go with me. But if you're going to go with me, I'll be blunt with you. I go there to work. I go there to make contacts because my get up and go leaves me about three hours after I get there. And uh, that's just me. I also try to follow propagation. And that's something that you'll learn in your area, not here on the East Coast. We're blessed with thousands and thousands upon thousands of activators and hunters and amateur radio operators everywhere we go on the East Coast. It's not the same on the West Coast, so everything that I'm saying doesn't fit that mold. Every area is different. If you're on the Midwest, you know when your propagation, when the best time of the day is to get on your area. So that's my presentation today. I appreciate each and every question that folks have. I try to focus on something that will be informative at the same time, not redundant. When you get a chance, if you're new, please, before you post a question, scroll down several days and see if your question's already being asked. Or better yet, if you're new, and you're at the top of the Facebook page, you're going to see some tabs, or little white tabs, I believe is the color of them. You'll see a tab over on the right-hand side. If you slide it over there, it says Files. Click on it. All those files have been offered by other activators and hunters alike with things that might answer your question on how can or what do you do or what equipment or what checklist or what antenna or those sections are there for you to utilize take advantage of all the free information that's there doesn't cost you anything okay doesn't cost you anything our development team have put up uh, what I would consider a very good process for all of us to stay informed. But it's up to you. You can ask questions from any of us, and I'm sorry, wherever you go, you're always going to have somebody that's got a little rough answer, and, and I try not to. When I'm out activating, you ask me to park, I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm going to give you the park number. Some folks get a little edgy because they think everybody's on the spotting page. They're not. I wish everybody was on the spotting page. It would make our life a lot easier. And when I'm in a pileup, or Joe's in a pileup, or uh, Mike's in a pileup, a lot of times we don't have time to go to the spotting page and refresh it and uh, respot because we're taking care of the pileups. 
and you know some folks get mad because there's pileups well you can't get mad uh, is propagation none of us control it we just get to play with it nc forks l north carolina for extreme lovers my time is up have a blessed day 73s